All right, we are finally live, guys. Hopefully, you guys can hear us. Hopefully, we're loud and clear. Dave, go ahead and talk into your mic, make sure people can hear you. Yeah, hopefully, everyone can hear us today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll wait for the chat to come in and make sure that we are heard before we get started. So, that should be good. Perfect. All right, cool. All right, so we'll get started with the show. First of all, we want to thank our sponsors of the show, which is Blem Tools, PR, oh, I'm sorry, not PR, <laughs> Mobile Tech Mobile RX, Tech RX <laughs> and, and Bankcraft Tools. So they keep the show going, guys. And as always, if you want to support us, head over to their websites. And if you see something you like, uh, allow them to earn your business. Thank you. So since we start out with tools, guy, uh, Dave, <laughs> I guess we'll just get right in it. Um, you want to go straight to them? I mean, what do you what do you what do you want to do? Yeah, that works. Great. <clears throat> First, we got to make sure that we're heard loud and clear. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, please give us some input to make sure uh, make sure you can hear us. Let's just pause. Make sure you guys. I know there's a little delay. Dave is just quick with the with with the uh, chat. <laughs> it's a little bit of a. Uh, All right, perfect. So let's get started. Here. started. Yeah, um, for sure. So yeah, I mean the first, and I talked about this I think on a couple of other shows. I always say that. Um, and we brought on multiple tools throughout this last year, throughout, you know, since we started doing these live Q&As. Um, my abundance of tools that I buy is very limited. I, I have said before that I like what I have. Correct. Um, not that I'm not like, uh, like I won't buy a new tool or, you know, I won't be privy to like want to spend money on one, but I do right. like what I work with. Um, but one thing that, I did buy this year that I wish I really, really bought a few years uh, earlier is this Milwaukee buffer. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> you, what, you, you just bought I just thing? bought this last year. You before? Like I was the using pad? the, yeah, the pad okay. that uh, just on your regular drill. Mm -hmm. um, and just realizing how fast the, that this, oh, sp that this spins, uh, compared to just a regular drill, I was using like an 18 volt Makita uh, with a buffing pad on it, and it just wasn't like it was a night and day difference yeah. between having this Milwaukee buffer uh, than just having the buffing pad on a, a regular drill. Pull your pull your mic up. So pull your mic up, Dave. Push it. Well, yeah. probably push back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, changes changes in the middle of the show. But it's He's fine. more worried about that than that. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Are we good? Yeah. So you did use the standliner tools. If anybody's on our Instagram or my Instagram, uh, Dave uh, tried out the new standliner. I think Ray Snake or Round Rounded Snake tool. Um, so head over to our or you know our Instagram Dentless Touch and our Instagram story. Dave explains you know his first. Five minutes Literally with my the first tool, experience yeah. with the sandliner <laughs> tool. And it was definitely something different. Uh, the metal is different. It, it does push different. I know there are certain techniques. Um, and I think we said earlier today um, that you are going to the standliner training in Minnesota later yep. this month to yep. learn how to properly use these tools because there is a certain technique, um, I think, with each and every one of them. So they do look a little odd. They're a little bit differently shaped than regular PDR tools. Mm -hmm. So when you get these in your hands, if you are an experienced tech, you do have some knowledge on how to actually use them. But if you are just, uh, you know, someone getting into the into this uh, industry and looking to buy a set of tools, I don't think the standliner set is going to be your first go to of like Whoa. that you should buy because <laughs> there is so many different ways to push on the tool, whereas like. When you have, when you're like learning and just a direct like push is going to be so much easier With, than like multiple points. Without being, without have gone through his training, right? So he trains guys from you know start to you know finish or from 
you know, beginner to experienced techs, they probably don't like using the tools that we've been using for, for 10 years. years, you know? So I can't tell you if it's better to, you know, with stamina. I think yeah. grabbing all knowledge of how to use all tools, because that's all we're trying to do is just figure out problems. So if I have more tools and more ideas in my arsenal, and my little go bag or in my toolbox, my mental toolbox, then yeah. I'm, I'm going to do well on that repair. So it looks like they're asking for the part number for that um, gun over there. Is it on the part? Is it on there? Uh, 2438-20 All right, is what it says. It's uh, just a two-inch sander, three-inch polisher uh, from Milwaukee. Uh, I think it was just under 300 bucks, but it has two different speeds on it. And it is a night and day difference from, and I do, you know, I do sand some of my repairs. I yeah. mean, it's, I think it's just needed. It does happen. Um, and I use toll cut and I go to the pink sheet. That's the one that I use. Yeah, that, listen, that's the most aggressive one. That's right? the one that I use. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. the one that, um, not that I trained with, but that someone had given me when I first came across toll cut. Um, and that's what I was using. So that's what I've always used. And I gear my sanding around knowing that. Yeah. That it's like the. Yeah, the awesome. The, the deepest cut mm -hmm. but this buffer here the way that this buffs i mean there was no there's no streaks that are left there's no mm -hmm. sanding marks that are left when i'm done um, it does come with three different pads on it which is nice or in the kit which is nice as well and i do kind of utilize and it all has them. a kit like, it gives you a little yeah, little, it's a full little bag, bag for, yeah uh, mm -hmm. i think around three hundred dollars mm -hmm. but that was like that was a huge investment i mean a lot of times cleaning up repairs um Giving it a nice little buff after when you're done, getting rid of some of those uh, maybe knockdown marks or uh, clear coat, maybe something that you may have done with your knockdown or something like that. But I do really enjoy this Milwaukee buffer. Wow. So I have the same one, and you set it at two. So someone's asking how fast. I don't know, but it says 83,000 is two. So I guess 83,000 revolutions a minute, I guess. It doesn't even say like RPM or something, but. Um, and then the number one is 28. Um, I know a, a guy, uh, one of my hell guys, what he would run is a five inch pad, buff the outer edge, and it actually spins faster if you just put it on one. So you don't have to <laughs> use it to. So there's a little trick that he, that he, uh, he was telling me about. What, does it have RPM on it? No. All right, so let's get through these tools because I mean, it's just yeah, a buffer. We, we got a bunch. We got like, a hey, bunch of them. Isn't we're gonna go our favorite tools? I said okay, and, and I know a lot of my tools are repetitive, week in and week out. I, you know, just I'm I'm not. I don't want to say a tool buyer. Um, I do enjoy new products, like I said, but just the amount of tools that I'm actually buying is very limited throughout the year because I know what I do have, and if I am buying something, it's typically replacements of like Dent Craft tips, R4 tips. I love all of their. Uh, different size blue and cherry mm -hmm. color tips. Uh, you'll see them on a couple of my ultra tools here. I love, uh, that's what I'm typically mm -hmm. ordering. Mm -hmm. And then if I do come across a tool that maybe you have recommended or someone else that I've yeah. seen online, um, I'll go ahead and maybe check it out. But, you know, for the most part, I really am yeah. set with what I do have. I, you know, I, yeah. I'm proficient with it. I know where to go. I know what does what. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's get through some of these. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you want me to go up next? Yeah, go ahead. All right, cool. Yeah. So, uh, you, this has been on the show before, but it's just the B and D edge pliers. I believe Anson has a version of their own. Um, this will save you a lot of time. Uh, if for the guy, I won't. I will spare the guys that are, I've already talked to about this tool. But again, edge of doors. It just allows you to uh, pull that edge up with. A lot of stability, a lot of control, pretty much one-handed. So you can kind of get in a different angle and see what you're like uh, because you do have some times where it actually blocks your vision. So uh, this is kind of like a must-have for me. Um, the only other option is to use something with a, your, what is it, your mini lifter. And it's just, it doesn't give you the control because it's two pieces you're trying to keep together and then also, actually, you know, take the dent out. So. This is the B and D edge pliers. They're a little pricey, so if you do edges, you know it's well worth it. If you don't only do like one a year, and it may not be, uh, you know, a good tool for you, especially if it's on the wholesale lot, because you can just take a Craftman hammer and kind of get it up. 
you know, if you're just doing one a uh, a year. So, but if if you guys do a lot of uh, edges and a lot of crazy repairs, um, edges, the fenders and stuff like that, I started using this tool on even trim. I've worked out a little bit of dents on the uh, chrome trim. So, edgy pliers, guys. I like the build quality of it. Uh, I think the, the yeah. stability on that. Each bolt um, has uh, like a locking, you know, like thread lock. Each bolt has like thread lock on it. So it's like, and then a locking nut. I mean, some of this stuff just. I mean, there's weight to yeah. these. Like, there's, oh, yeah. there's actual weight to these. They're not like flimsy and cheap. You can not, really, I, I mean, some of these doors that we're working with here, um, I know that the ease of this, of having this tool um, and moving those edges, yeah. this is huge. For sure. Um, yeah. And, and and it and it took I think initially like a lot of people were skeptical because I guess the price is just so expensive, but then when people started using them, they started to see you know how much it, yeah. leverage and, and power you actually have with these. It will snag your finger, so just watch out for it. I've caught my finger in a couple of times, and it it, it will destroy. <laughs> you will be unhappy for the day. <laughs> so I'll just keep it going. All right. I've been trying out this Glexo glue. Uh, I probably only have about half the sticks left, and I'm liking it better than green, mainly because it pulls like green and almost never breaks apart. It all comes up in one uh, it, in one uh, tab, you know, after you use it. I've also been playing around with just double stacking the glue. So if you're a guy that doesn't like to uh, continue to keep cleaning off your glue tab. You may want to try the Glexo glue. It works a lot better than the green cactus green when it when you're just reapplying uh, glue to the same you know glued tab. Uh, so so far it's been been well. It uh, you don't have to use your limited or I use a limited um, glue gun. You don't have to use it on high. It, low is perfect for this glue. Um, it does take a little bit of time to set up. Almost the longer you keep it on the car, the harder it pulls. Now, now don't you know don't keep it on there for five minutes but you know a minute it may it, it's pretty good so if you're the type yeah, of guy also that yeah you see yeah. and then even even in the winter it's this flexible so you yeah. can tell it's just does it's not as brittle as like the the um cactus green so i've been playing around with it. I, I can't say it pulls harder i would say it pulls the same and we'll see as the weather warms up here if it's any good in the heat because that's that's it may not even yeah. dry. It's it's you know you can tell just how, how pliable it is right now. So it may only be like a moderate temperature, like 50, 60 degree uh, glue, you know, laminate uh, temperature. So, um, and to go on a glue set, I'm actually <laughs> rolling here now. <laughs> this is your whole set. To me, I like this gun. This is the to me the best gun out. I do have the Stucky gun, and I do have the Ryobi gun. And reviews on all of them. I done. I, I, I have. I have them all, man. I have the Pro PDR um, gun, which I do like that gun. Um, but this gun, I've dropped. The customer service is great. He said you can order just parts with it. There's some science behind the nozzle, and it's the way it heats up. It's just perfect. Like you can tell that a PDR guy, you know, built this gun. He's born ran. Plenty of different glues through it, and I think it just worked. It would be high or low. It just works. It just it, it just, just works. works, man. And and so if you're in the market of glue gun, you kind of want to set it in and forget it. I think uh, you may want to take a look at the limited. But it's so old, the stickers are like peeling off of it. But the limited uh, glue gun, and also now the Stucky one has its own battery. Um, and if you have the hell light, I think it works with the hell light too. So there's nothing wrong with the Stucky. It's just, I run a, I have a bunch of Makita batteries. So with my glue gun, I am constantly swapping in and out. I have yeah. like five of them. So when one battery goes dead, slap it in and then I'm, I'm still charging. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm still getting hot glue. So that's, you know, I've already invested into the battery. So now yeah. again, that's why I go to the gun. Um, Pro PDR is the same thing. I do like to swap out the, the the so the Pro PDR you can swap out the glue guns and keep the glue in there. Got it. Honestly, I just haven't worked through working through his paces yet, uh, but it, it seems like a viable option. But this is like a workhorse. Yeah. Like this, I literally just toss this in the back of my truck and wherever it, it lands. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a yeah. I mean, it's like as tough as like at the wall. Yeah. Yeah. 
surprisingly, it works, it's always there. I it mean, falls it off my a... car and it's just, ah, okay, still working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does work. Uh, real quick, though, uh, someone's asking what scanner do you use? Uh, okay. We're talking about pre and post scan. Yeah, so I'm, I haven't bought it yet, but so far I've the, been doing. What about the brand? Oh, Altel. Altel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have been asking and asking, you know, around and, and body shops and pretty much everybody's saying Altel, the 908 or 906. And I think there's a 906 BT. That's just the Bluetooth version. You might as well just get it. Looks cooler. You don't have to continue to keep bending over and standing by the car. You can just plug it in, pull up your mobile app, start writing up the estimate while you're doing the post scan or pre scan. And so just get the Bluetooth version. And you'll be, uh, they actually have other features to like reprogram the tire sensors and stuff like that. If you want to get into that, like, <laughs> I know you've been doing a lot of research, yeah, right yeah. Now, so, so you know, it's and you're gonna probably have an in depth review, of oh, of course, soon. of course. A higher works for PDR tech, you <laughs> yeah, know, you know, exactly. we don't use it like the yeah, you've explained like the better, like the pros and cons to me, and, yeah. and you've definitely persuaded me where, um, the like they're gonna be purposeful for a PDR tech for a business owner. Uh, to be doing pre and post scans before you start working on some of these yeah. cars. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Altel and 908. Altel, nine, yeah, 908. I think it's 906. 906 BT. Got it. Yeah, I think 906 Altel, or 908. One of the two. Yeah, one of the two. It's the <laughs> 900 series. They got the 800 series. It's the 900 series you want got anyway. So and the BT is just the Bluetooth. Well, I mean, I'll go next. I mean, go yeah, ahead, man. Yeah. I got to tell him move it. <laughs> the ease of use um, for a door hanger or uh, just a window hanger. Uh, Endeavor Tools, uh, Chad over there created this. Uh, I mean, it's just it's ingenuitive. Like the the way this works, um, how easy this is to use, is it's worth definitely worth the money. Um, it it has these two I don't know what they get like zip tie or tie down like style ratchets on each side. But when I'm in a car, I'm able to actually just move this with one hand rather than trying to uh put my knockdown with the, with the hanger and then slide that this gives me a full bar i have a, a lot more range of motion than some of these rings that are out there uh, i can just put this right in the door close the door and if i need to adjust easily adjust with one hand if i need to while still holding uh you know the rod in the other hand uh endeavor tools makes a, yeah. this is a great hanger yeah yeah <laughs> it, yeah the latching system is, is it works superb it's, for real. it's another one it just works the ease of use like i said mm -hmm. uh, as a mobile tech i have one i don't know if yours do it but i have one that actually extends so you can actually change the, for like the hatch or something like that yep. yeah mm -hmm. so with the same cool. ratcheting yeah system. endeavor tools i mean i really really enjoyed this <laughs> so i got Facebook or I mean Instagram live. If you're yes. watching Instagram live, please go over to our YouTube channel. This is something new. I'm like trying to do both here, but trying please go over. Yeah, <laughs> please go over to our YouTube channel. We're actually doing live show where we're just talking about tools. Sorry for the YouTube guys that are already on our show. I just wanted to do a little plug. We'll keep it up here for a little bit, but please guys, if you're on Instagram, jump on YouTube. <laughs> So I'll go next. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that was my endeavor to I really, really enjoyed that. All right, so back to like the accessories before we get into these bunch of rods that we do have. We got a Stucky light, which I prefer. <laughs> Honestly, I prefer it. It's like my go-to light. I pack it up into a bag. It fits, you know, it's, it, it's, very, it's a very good light. Um, Dave was actually using it. <laughs> kind of so fell I in had, love yeah, with it. I had two firsts today. Uh, <laughs> One was the Stanliner tools, and the second was using a Stucky light for the first time. Uh, I've seen another tech locally in Chicago have one. I never actually worked with it. This is the first time I actually worked with a Stucky light. Uh, and I know uh, if you guys have watched some of these, I'm pro Illuminet. That's what I've used uh, pretty much since the beginning of my career. So, <laughs> but this Stucky light. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed how easy this is to move. Uh, it can be difficult sometimes with the Eliminate board uh, if you don't really tune in or fine tune your uh, lock line. It can get kind of stiff and it doesn't want to move. And sometimes you're kind of really having to bend uh, the board or you feel like you're going to crack it or break it. This Stucky board, it was very light. It just moved where I wanted it to go. I can kind of move it 360 a lot easier. You can one hand move it. Like literally just yeah. grab it, move it, and it stays. I didn't actually have to yeah. move the suction. I was able to move the board more yeah. so. 
a lot of times with my eliminate, I'm resuctioning it. Yeah. Uh, this I could just move the board a little bit farther back, 360, uh, yeah. and it was a lot easier to use. So yeah, I I can't say that I like I would not recommend like I would recommend a stucky <laughs> yeah, board for someone. Bad, yeah. At that point, it's going to come down to fade. It's a little dimmer than an Illuminate. Illuminate mm -hmm. gives it that pop. You can see everything yep. in the mm -hmm. orange peel. That is, that is um, true. Look at that. That's, I mean, that's nine day brightness right there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The Illuminate just two LEDs. pops on a panel more than the stuff. Crazy. So I, uh, I really, yeah. <laughs> Sorry to take over that, but yeah. That's, no, no, you're good. That's the you But I mean, Illuminate now, so you could, you could adjust this. You know, if you spend the time, you can get it to work just like the Stucky. It is a little bulky. From at the light version, but they do that so they can run the. You can move your uh, board in or out, and it changes the fade. So some some of the newer guys, if you're just having a hard time seeing, this option you know may help you out. Uh, I was talking to I don't know what I think it was Martin Marty, uh, and he was he trains a bunch of guys, and he was saying everybody eyes is different. You'd be surprised how many people. You know, you gotta find a fade that works for you. So I completely agree. I fell in love with the stuff. Yeah, I wish it was a little brighter because this is actually just crazy bright. Um, and I used to say it burns the battery out and this green light would turn uh, yellow real quick. But really it will last like another hour and a half, two hours on the yellow. So it's, it's not that bad actually. Um, so, and if you notice, Again, you can use a Makita battery where the Stucky has its uh, its own battery that you have to order through Stucky. It's not too bad. There's a suction cup. So you also have the automatic suction. You guys can see that. And then I never had the suction like the, like the Stucky. A little pump suction. So I don't think Stucky has that option just yet. Uh, but that's something that James Lee kind of put together. And, uh, and someone has the price works. difference on both of these. So I was just kind of looking okay. here. Um, Stucky starting at about four fifty. Oh, that's pretty cheap. Four twenty five. Yeah, that's pretty cheap. Um, and a limited, I think it just off the top of my head, I think it's like three fifty. Nah, I think it's like, oh, starting. Yeah, starting off, right. starting off with both of these lights. So you don't as get soon this. As you start to customize yeah. them, adding different lock line, adding the vacuum, adding the the different yeah, interchangeable lines. An limited light can become pretty it's like expensive five, yeah 550 or 525 for like a fully loaded one yeah and so yeah. i just think the customization on a stucky light is a little bit less so those prices are kind of just more uh standard but so it, starting off i think they're both really good lights it's going to come down to fade preference at that yeah. point but if this you, is, if this you is completely outfit in a limited light it can become uh pretty pricey so how i use both lights right because i like them both is the stucky is like my outdoor kind of just yeah, we run and gun. Kind of door dinger, yeah, like just door of. dinger, run and gun type light. It stays in my go bag and you know it gets the majority of the dents out, bigger dents. I can move it around. I love it. This is what I set up on my uh, Medusa stand with the get a grip arm and all that stuff. This is the light that stays on that. I actually see Matt in the chat and I'm like, oh my God, my get a grip arm. Like that, that has to be my favorite tool. I used it today. And left it at the shop because it stays on my Medusa, uh, my symbol stand. So anyway, but that's where this stays. It almost, it basically acts as a hill light for me because it's so bright. I could pull it back, you know, ten feet from the car and really start working out that orange pill or whatever, you know, any wiggle wave I can get in. And that's this is the only light that can do it outside of a hill light because it's just so bright. I try to do that with the Stucky, and it's because it's so dim, I, I can barely see the fade. Yeah. And because it doesn't have the Medusa, you know, when you go further back, you have to bring the light out a little bit. So yeah. because of the stand, I can do it. And so the stand works with the Makita battery. You have to order it for each battery. So it's just the system is where this is like an Apple. <laughs> like you got to love it because it just works with everything. You yeah. know what I mean? So, but anyway. Yeah, I mean, just the company itself, the, the amount of products that are limited it's like the offer, the versatility of it, yeah. Um, it's kind of like once you have one, you have them all. I mean, yeah. I do have an limited light. I have a limited glue gun. Uh, the adapters that go with the limited products, I mean, it's a great company. I'm like, so do you like the color fade boards that, that are out now? I, I have a bunch of them, and I stopped, I stopped using them. Yeah, I did the same. Like, I, they, 
when they first started coming out, I don't think they were kind of, I don't want to say a fad, but mm -hmm. they definitely were an adjustment for my eyes, which I felt like made it was better, right? Like pop yeah. more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but then over time, I ended up just going back to a clear lens. Yeah. And I don't know if that's just with the season change. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times if you're in, you know, the spring, summer, and you're working one, you know, one lens all summer, spring, summer long, mm -hmm. outside, sun's blaring on you. I mean, stuff can get pretty intense on your eyes. Yeah. Um, and then if you go to a colored uh, fade in, say, the fall into winter, it's going to seem like a huge nine day difference because you've been working on something or with another lens for, you know, four to six months. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of, I don't want to say it's placebo, but. Yeah, yeah, I'm back to a clear yeah, lens, clear and lens I use that way. inside and outside. So. Yeah. so we got some questions here. You want to know the size? The stubby, I believe, is 18, 18 inches. Um, and the Illimited, oops, sorry, dude. And the Illimited is 14 and 20. Yeah. I recommend getting the 20 to 14. It's just too small for me. Uh, what do you say? Uh, I, I daily use a 20 inch. Okay. Um, but both, I mean. You think it's both? Uh, I like, I like just go ahead and get the 20 to X inches. Yeah, I mean, like 14 was like my lot board. Like, that's kind of what that was. Like, when I was just on a lot all day mm -hmm. long, 14 inch was perfect. Um, but then now, just being more geared towards retail, it's always, I don't want to say larger damage, but it's typically more complex. So the 20 inch just kind of stays with me mm -hmm. all the time. And for the guys that are interested in the ecosystem, Eliminate is releasing their, uh, I think, uh, Hell Light soon. I think we just, David was just talking about it in the comments. Uh, but Stucky has his out. So both companies will have, you know, a, a, a hail and kind of a door dinger light for both parties. So, and how many strips on the light? So I use a five strip yeah. um, LED on mine. And so the, my, my Stucky has a three strip and my Eliminate has a six strip. So uh, three cool and three warm. I prefer the warm most of the time, unless it's a, 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 a you know a champagne color car or a goldish car or anything that the warm will fade out. Um, that's just what I prefer. I just I tailor it to kind of <laughs> my eyes and whatever's reflecting best off of that car at the time. So yeah. but, so that's why I like having both the cool and the warm. Um, another local tech has a three strip. And sometimes, like I wish I had either that extra yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. cool or that extra warm on yeah. the other mm -hmm. side. That's what I so, find myself with the with the stucky. It's like I wish I had that one center where it was some, warm. Yeah, that like one yeah. extra strip or that one extra piece of fade yeah. uh, for certain damage. So I think going with the five strip, spending that extra money for that yeah. is definitely yeah. worth it. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to you know talk to you guys about our sponsors just quickly. Uh, first off. Uh, I want to thank everybody. We just hit 25,000 subs, so all the support here, guys. I was telling Dave, we're almost two more away, one more away before the show started. Uh, so we have a lot to celebrate, guys. Obviously, Dave's here, so we're actually you know, trying to get a new style of a show together uh, just, for, just while he's here. Um, but I want to thank everybody for the support on the live show, live channel. Looks like we got the – I even totally forgot about the Instagram, but anyway – I um, want to thank everybody for all the support and, 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 and what you've done for, to grow the channel. Um, so back to the sponsors. Guys, support the sponsors. Blim, Mobile Tech RX, and Dentcraft Tool. Guys, please go ahead and sponsor the, I mean, you know, support those guys, please. Um, back to the tool, Dave. <laughs> we got a ton of them, guys. Yeah, so hopefully so I, I will get into the actual, like, I guess, non-accessory style tools now. Um, I brought this on before. Drew's tools. A, 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 you don't have one. Stab me and, down. Yeah, you don't have one of these. Now I <laughs> we'll try to get through the tools quick. We have something <laughs> similar. So I think you have something similar. Yeah. So here's mine. Okay. So let's compare. <laughs> so this is the finesse, PDF finesse uh -huh. two two four five, I believe. Yep. Yeah, two four two or two four five. And so this is the comparison, guys. Yeah. Hope you guys can see it's a little longer on my end. Yours is tapered though. Correct. And a lot wider. Yeah. So you, you have any flex on yours? You probably had no flex. No, this thing is. Wow, sick. I didn't even notice that. The throw is pretty much the same, I guess. Yours comes up a little bit more, which I, that might be <laughs> that might be better actually. I really, really enjoy this door. The throw difference, guys. That's gonna matter right there. 
Wow. I, really now, I don't like the shortness now. So he makes a longer one as well. Okay. There is a, a second size. Okay. And maybe about that size or, I don't know, 30 inches or so. Um, but this is this is the shorter one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the adjustable handle mm -hmm. is, I mean, there's a little play in there, but I mean, nothing. Yeah, that you I'm, do have play, huh? But nothing that I'm going to really mind. like write home about. You know what I mean? Nothing that I'm going to like. Ooh, that is some play, though. Okay, well, let the. <laughs> that is some play. With play. This over my, for about six months. So hopefully the guys can see it. <laughs> you think, is that oh, really man. affecting you in, in your pushing? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's there. Uh, I don't know, man. This I don't thing like is play. solid, guys. I do not let him uh, deter you in any way. Uh, Drew's tool, this Drew's Tools door tool works. It, 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 I love it. Like you said, it's got a sharp tip. It's tapered. It slides down in some of these really, really tight window accesses mm -hmm. where that'll get kind of caught up in the shape here. It will. It will. It will. Because yours is thinner. All, the, all thinner. the way almost to the top here. Yep. It's shaped. Yep. Yeah, there's power in the handle. It, I mean, this thing works. Yeah, like you said, there's a little play up there. Yeah, there's That's some the, play. There's a play. There's got to be. But it's completely covered. Um, so, like, where it's not exposed. Yeah, and this is exposed. Is exposed. It's now already rusting, guys. So, it's, yeah. it's pretty. I'm, um, I'm a mobile tech, and my tools do sit outside. And sometimes, uh, if I do catch bad weather or something like that, um, the tools are going to get wet. Having an exposed mechanism like yep. that for me some like i've had those rust out so that's mm -hmm. the only like thing about pdr for for me um i've had a couple tools of theirs and i know you could send them back this is really it's just a personal preference when i when i go for a door tool i go for this or my uh other blem tool the door handle that mm -hmm. I, my blue handle mm -hmm. uh those are the two that i go for so this yeah these are but door i think tools. we use them for this point right here guys so I think why we grab this tool is for this, this, this yeah. razor sharp <laughs> that, that and the kick, but razor yeah. sharp point. So and then yeah, the kick. This this nice long throw you just don't get in any other tool. Yeah. So get the best of both worlds. You get good leverage because you're leveraging off of your this stainless will steel bite through and some then, body lines through that. If there's something on the aluminum, door. like it's it's a stout tool. If you don't have one of these, you need yeah. to get one. Whether it's his or yeah, mine, one. like you have to. Uh, have this, especially with all the aluminum and high shift steel out here, you have to get something that's like razor sharp to cut through, you know, like you said. So this. I agree. Um, so to go off the ratcheting hammers, guys, I, I mean handles, I actually use this blim tool. It is my longer, and just judging from the play, it has the exact same play that uh, Dave has. So it's probably using a similar mechanism because it, it, now it's a sealed handle. But I have the black hammer black handle hook tool and this is like the best bang for the buck uh i think the whole kit is like 199 you almost have to get it to start this is a dank craft black handle uh, my wrists have been hurting over the past two to three years so i've been trying to do my best to switch off to uh a ratcheting hammer but the reason why i ordered this from blim was this that extra length uh you still get the the point it is a little thicker. I wish it was uh, thinner right here because when you start getting further down into the door, you start touching things in the door where you need just a little bit, you know, narrow shaft. Yeah. But it doesn't have any flex. So, you know, you, you, you know catch 22. But this is the reason why I bought the blim tool. It's just that extra length. And I will buy a shorter version. Uh, you know, I just use yeah. That's this the one more. Yeah, I use the shorter handle, version yeah. of that of the blim? handle. Okay. Yeah. Um, for uh, my daily use, so my two pretty much ratcheting door handle tools are going to be the I believe the thirty inch version of this blim tool. Okay. With the Drew's tool do you, adjustable door. Do you think the thirty inch is has a smaller shaft? It's a half inch. Still. Half okay. Inch. So this is this is about a half inch shaft. Yeah. Or just so. under, yeah. So if you guys are new to the industry or just kind of want to upgrade, you know, tools, I recommend just buying ratcheting hammer, ratcheting handle tools as much as you possibly can. I know um, John Hiley has a new ratcheting system out. Uh, the tried and true one is an ultra dent tools. I mean, that thing has been out for probably like seven or eight years. We, I currently don't have one, but I am debating the sending all my tools off chopping off oh, the actually, you have one I just, oh, no, I just oh you have the blim yeah no someone was asking about a shorter blim tool i'm like there well i go. did bring that on you yeah. there we go it does have some play though 
it has the same play that you have. So I guess it doesn't matter because if I didn't notice it, the play the part, guys, I don't know. Yeah, maybe doing. it doesn't. Matter. <laughs> I mean, I can I can understand with the play at, at the at the top of the um, mechanism there. If you're really trying to pinpoint something and you're yeah. trying to dial in for that one last push, uh, that play can maybe come in, come into play at that <laughs> moment in time. But for me, it, as much as I beat on my tools and aggressive as I am, um, and I put these door tools through their paces, that's why I use them. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm the type where. If this door tool doesn't work, I take it and I throw it on the ground yeah. um, to grab my next one. That's just, I mean, that's how aggressive I am in my tools. And I put these, like I said, through their faces and they just work. So yeah. those, are, those are solid. I didn't mean to kind of cut you off there. No, you're remember. good. No, you're good. I'm Someone just. Someone had a shorter, yeah. you know, a shorter, I was asking about a shorter blunt tool. And so I use this one for the top of doors or top, yeah. higher body lines. Um, so I have this one, and then I think, like I said, the 30-inch, and then like the, the bigger version would be the one that you were showing. Yeah, the blue one. Yeah. Yep. This bad boy right here. Huge. All right, so <clears throat> if you got any more, I have a ton over here, so uh, we keep going. Keep it going. All right, so I think the industry will to honestly – and I do apologize for the tools being on the floor. We do not have a table <laughs> behind us where we can just quickly grab. Don't, this is we have not so a many thing. tools. This is your setup. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're gonna blame it all on me. Anyway, so the the tool, the the well tells like the the signature well tells. Like, I don't even know if they started well tells, but it seems like you know they they definitely have a a, a foot in the you know in, in everybody's uh you know toolbox. Um, is these dent craft well tells now I'm showing you guys the extra wide if you don't have a set it, It's I feel like it's definitely needed. It's for that one or two well, you know dents that need a well tell that you just need that little bit of extra leverage so this is the extra the ec I think the extra The extra wide. Yeah, extra wide or extra extra wide. I don't know what they're calling it, but dent craft well tells you know, are probably like, you know, the flagship well tells out there that they, they're not the yeah. most expensive made, you know, they're not stainless, but they just work. You can bend them, you can abuse them. They, they almost never fail. They're, uh, they're so, five piece set. Um, and they're or sorry, six piece set. Yeah. yeah. You're anywhere three to 400, three yeah. to 500 bucks yeah, for so. a set of whale tails. But the thing is with that three to 500, you're, you're going to get, get your years. Yeah. On them. Yeah. You're going to get, yeah. And that and that's exactly what you know. I was talking to Richard. He's actually said he's like, you know, we our tools are designed for like twenty years. You know, and this, you know, they will break just like anything else. And you know, I don't think he's quite said that, but he's like, it's the best bang for the buck that's gonna last twenty years. I mean, I don't know. Seems like a good choice to me. <laughs> so. I'm I'm in love with these double bins. I don't think you have one, or is it Ryan that said that you didn't have? Oh, okay, you have. He has them. I'm sorry. These double bins are beautiful. I've never seen a double bin with a short. Now, like, mind you, we both went to our trucks and just grabbed tools that we thought, not even knowing what the other was going to bring. So that's actually yeah. pretty funny. Yeah, you have we the same one. a lot of similar <laughs> tools. Um, yours, I think, is a little bit. So thicker. yours looks like the bendable one. No, it's so not? this I don't think was supposed to be bendable. <laughs> it was just the way it was being used that day. Kind of ah, missed on that. Yeah, yeah it created this bow in the actual tool here. Um, but yours is also thicker than this. This this has to be like like probably one of the best like door like fenders and like I, I love this tool. I actually have the smaller version. Okay. And I was fine with it, but I, I was like, man, I love this tool so well. And obviously, you know, all the tips are this, you know, this thread. And so I bought, that's why it looks so shiny. I bought the new one with the, obviously the standard So this thread. has this. Oh, yours is like way over, yo. I mean, I have one with the small, <laughs> I have one with the small thread. So, yeah, if you guys can see that. Yeah, it's crazy. It, there's no actual, this kind of flares out at the end, mm -hmm. and his does not. So this, a lot of times, is a lot better when you're trying to go through some of these factory holes. Uh, rather than having this flare that won't let you through, um yeah that's actually a lot yeah <laughs> probably a lot nicer hey guys if you're on instagram join us on youtube you'll get the full picture and not this portrait mode so please join us on our youtube channel it's just dentless touch it's a live show guys
So yeah, that's crazy. We got the same tool. We brought the same tool out, huh? Yeah. What's your part number? Did you even is yours even on there? Oh, that's right. Is that it? What does it say? It says ultra dead tools. Oh. So if anybody's thinking about our part, once the part number is ST3802. That's the part. Yeah, there's one on here, but I can barely read it. There's like a <laughs> nice scratch right to it. But um so yeah, and if you guys didn't catch it. Another dead craft. Ah, there you we know, go. Blue. I love the blue tips over the red for some reason. I didn't even know they had blue. When you were asking me, hey, you got the blue ones? I was like, <laughs> they make blue? I don't use the – I barely use the red. I use – yeah, I use all – I mean, all shapes and sizes of these blue ones. For some reason, I like them better. Uh, when I use them with heat, they just don't seem to rip as easy. Um, if I'm using them in, like, a weird way, they don't tear, I think, as easy as the red. It could be a placebo effect thing or something like that, but – uh, I just, for some reason, prefer the, the blue uh, dead craft tips. So I use these on multiple tools. Uh, a lot of my interchangeable tips, I'm using a dead craft, some sort of dead craft uh, rubber tip uh, tip. Yeah. Cool. We got uh, Mark on here from Blend Tools. So go ahead and say what's up to him, guys. I think he just, uh, just commented here. Yeah, yeah. That was the first time I'm seeing it. Uh, so this is a tool that I really enjoy. I, I'm trying to think of where I got this from. I think it's Dent Magic. I don't even know if they're still in business. But uh, this is like my body line, the BMW body line tool. This tool is just stout. This pick tool, it was like my first pick tool. So, you know, before aluminum, this was like my aluminum tool. Like I had to shove it everywhere, you know, because I didn't have the little extra, you know, PDR for yeah. I mean, it looks, I mean, it's strong. It this tool does metal. not flex. Um, I've had the double bin from Dent Crab. That's kind of where I started from. You know, they, all the tools were that great, but it does have a lot of flex. So I switched off to the Ultra and um, just to get the thinner. And that's the one thing that I think people, uh, where's my Ultra? Where do we put the Ultra tools? Is, did I bring it over there? So, yeah, so the Ultra tools, like, it's thinner than a half inch. It will go in a half inch hole. Yeah. So they must machine this and know that you're gonna, you know, for guys, you know, we used to drill. I mean, it is what it is back in the day. But for the guys that drill it a half inch hole, you don't want to go no bigger than a half inch. Correct. And this will actually go in and you have plenty of movement. So it's not an actual half inch. And a lot of people build tools that are half inch and you actually gotta make it what a five eighths hole, nine sixteen. Yeah, like and then you can't even get the tool in the through in, the yeah, yeah through the what's name. So anyway. So this is kind of like the old style. This is like a half inch. So you have to actually make a nine sixteen hole to gain access. Uh so ultra dent tools, but this is a dent magic tool. I don't know if you guys have it. I think they call it a three angle pick or it's like a pick. I know a couple other manufacturers that make the um, same man. Uh, uh, replicas, I yeah, guess, are yeah. pretty similar. It's not that spectacular um, with it. What you'd be looking for is uh, a bigger than a half inch rod, uh, yeah. 30 inches or so, 20 something inches with a double bend and, uh, you know, some sort of, I guess, pick or. So a lot of times I'm using this yeah. when I'm trying to like, like, like unstring a dent. Like, so I wrap this with a little bit of tape. And so you still got that, you know, that point, point. and. And I just suck that thing right up, right up, yo. That's Dang, it. This thing is, this thing is a beast, <laughs> yo. And this is like old school, though. So, you know, you may not need this tool like current day, but this tool is made me a lot of money, saved me a lot of time. Yeah. And so, you know, but I bought this tool like 10 years ago. So, yeah. And it was my best tool that, like, like without this, so I couldn't what, take this out. So, after you saying that, what kind of what comes to mind, um, and I'm going to kind of go back to Ultra again. Uh, this single bend, it's just a regular single bend yeah. from Ultra. This is kind of like but, you said, one of those. But like you said, that footing is perfect. Yeah. It's it's a perfect. single bend. I throw these black, I call them chair tips, um, but these black uh, just push caps mm -hmm. uh, go right on here. That's how I use this thing. And it, this thing has saved me, it, as simple as it may be, just a single bed rod with a, a black push cap on it. Uh, it saved me multiple times in mu in multiple instances. Yeah, I use it for body lines to get most of the meat up. Then I'll go in with another tool. Um, it just works. Yeah, it's and you can like, take this. It does cap come off, put yeah. tape, and then yeah, work, I typically you know? always run it with a cap. Mm -hmm. um, I'll use another tool and wrap that with tape if I do need it. 
this kind of always just has a black cap on it and this mm -hmm. it just works yeah. like you said it's, it's a beast it works it saved me time it saved me money um single bed from ultra half inch and we're, we're not emphasizing the lengths here because i think you know i don't know about you dave but we at least for me i have a 12 inch a 24 inch or maybe a 36 inch so the reason why we're probably not saying oh this is like a 36 inch or 30 inch is because you know get what you want we're just the, the design stays the same and if you think you need the 12 inch or a 40 inch you know all of them are beautiful and the thing with ultra there's a little to no flex sorry I didn't yeah really, no, little no. no flex so when you do get that 42 inch and stuff like that uh it does you know it does pan out very well for you so you actually have your dinner mine's attached to the car still so what <laughs> my did now i'm gonna bring it <laughs> oh you were, was, you were yeah. speaking a beast of like uh yeah i bought this it's last so year at MT. <laughs> Golly, man. i bought this last year at mt i think it was, it was last year two years ago mm -hmm. i always forget and um You're probably two years ago yeah yeah but it works yeah <laughs> we used it today you were like rolling through that fender today. yeah this is what i used today another yeah. blue tip uh mm -hmm. from dencraft on there uh we had to find a place to actually unbend it from the last yeah. car i was working on i rarely ever use the foot pad okay i don't even know actually where it is anymore <laughs> um but yeah i mean it's a great flat bar it just works so you just use it as a flat bar just a bendable flat bar yeah i'll take the tip out a lot of times wrap it with two pieces of like just one tooth with tape and just go ahead you're missing out on like all the good qualities of the tool with i mean this thing can act like a slot bar and all kinds of things so when you're in a shop and you have time to actually take cars <laughs> apart and you have time to actually delicately delicately do all these things <laughs> yeah you know this thing has multiple uses when you're in a driveway in the middle of downtown chicago and you're trying to yeah. get a fender done in about an hour and a half so you can get to your next stop yeah. this is it this so, is what i'm working with i'm i'm putting this in there and i'm and i'm manhandling um <laughs> You know, I done. So today, when I took apart the uh, the interior of that Rav Four, and I showed you, it took me every bit of three minutes to to let start. You know, to build something to leverage off of the dent dial. That's not quick enough. Or yeah, one hundred percent. Like I'm not discrediting. Like that was okay. That was, that was yeah. Like, out. You guys will see the video. It's, I mean, I, I think it's on Instagram too. Yeah. yeah, he uses this as just a leverage system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um actually bolted some some bolts through here to actually bolt to yeah. the tailgate itself mm -hmm. and then we're just leveraging off of this yeah great awesome but you wouldn't do that on the road i mean you could do the dent without doing that correct but I, I, I would think it would be faster it is 100 yeah, percent. i think so yeah yeah That's i mean I there's times where i do work harder and not smarter <laughs> okay all right I just make <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i think like when you have that setup time yeah. Or you have time yeah. to actually you think, think about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm looking for the person's address, the car itself. Yeah. Where am I going to park? How am I yeah. going to unload my tools? Do I have to pay for my like steals your tools and make sure it's yeah. There's a lot out. of other yeah. things going on than like, oh, yeah. I wonder if I can bend this <laughs> ever so slightly and put two ten mils in here, <laughs> and now I have perfect leverage. Like that's not just how yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know you are. Like, I, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, you, you are. That. So like, yeah. yeah power to you if you have the time yeah. um this can be used and uh, it's a very versatile tool it can be used in many different ways but yeah i mean i mean this thing today yeah it, this is what i use for my fenders yeah. you know my it's flat not, bar it looks like it's made a little bit thicker than actually mine i'll show you mine but it looks different yeah i'm, I'm, bending, I'm using it as a flat bar inside of a door for body mm -hmm. lines it's a great tool great yeah. tool i like it yeah i always i mean i always recommend the dent dial yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think every works. tech needs a dent dial in their arsenal. I mean, I have the twenty-two. I this mean, is the twenty-two. Yeah, that's uh, a twenty-two heavy. heavy. Yeah, correct. And yeah, it I, works. Yeah, I think I would get the twenty-four. He does make a twenty-four heavy. I would opt for the twenty-four heavy. So if I had to do it all again, um, so let's go on a little bit on accessories. I know we we still got some more tools about pushing, but I really am am in love with this propane heat gun uh matt from get a grip he sells them i believe matt if you want to leave a comment uh but looks like we have some people in the chat here but matt if you want to leave a comment i'm sorry anyway matt i think matt sells it from get a grip he does sell the the arm that connects to it so it actually hold it's actually pretty light it's only the propane this thing is nothing but it is a torchless heat gun haven't had it on in a while there you go 
the torturous heat gun, I mean, uh, flameless heat gun, and this thing works. I haven't changed the propane tank probably in about a month and a half, and I pretty much, or about a month, and I use it every day. So I used to have the Milwaukee um, kind of electric heat gun. Just didn't put out the output, you know, that I needed. This thing is phenomenal. You have to have that if you are in cold climates or you just want to heat that panel up to 150 or whatever you prefer. That's bang for the buck right he here. He said Matt from Get a Grip also sells. I'm, I'm pretty sure he sells the, the, the head, everything. The, top. the head, oh, everything. the tank as well? I don't know what the tank. I mean, tanks, I don't think he even okay. can ship the tank. Yeah, so then he puts stuff. this whole. Yeah, it's just the head, just the Got top it. part, you know, screws on to like a propane you get for like seven bucks at like, you know, yeah, Lowe's and or Matt something. says, yeah, I have them for sale. I get a grip now, so. Yeah, and then he, you know, get the arm, it, whether it be a suction cup or the, I have it attached to like my cymbal stand, and then that way you could just always have that constant heat. 100%. And then you can just dial it down so that you maintain whatever the temperature that you that you prefer to work on. Um, and it, you can get it pretty close. I mean, I have it about three or four inches from the panel and just turn it all the way down, especially if the day is like windy or you know it's a cold day. Like you can get it kind of close. It will, it will not burn a paint. Now obviously keep that in mind. I mean, it is hot, so, you know, and I always say 150, I've had, have pushed metal around 160, but that's my temperature gauge. I don't, there may be some differences in yours. So I always recommend between like 145 and 150 uh, that's how my gauge re registers. Um, back on the B and D's. Now I use this today. I'm falling in love with the B and D tools, man. I'm telling you. So this is the prop and lock. They've cut. It's quality. Like it's yeah, like a it's, quality it's stout. Yeah, it's stout. It's, it's stout stuff. Now we're working on that lift gate, and I don't want no flex, no movement, uh, yeah. nothing. So I spend the extra literally ten seconds setting this up because it's from. Yeah, this is what we used to run. Also, my third first for the day. I'm actually, pushing on a vehicle with a prop and lock. Um, I didn't even realize until now, as we were pushing on this uh, tailgate earlier, uh, I didn't realize that actually this was in there the whole time. And now that I think about it, there was zero flex. Like, there was <laughs> no movement. Yeah. There was no movement. I this is what I typically run, um, and I bought this yeah. last year at MTE, and that's what I was typically running, but. Um, I'm getting a prop and lock. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> and I use this for doors majority of the time. It works a little bit. This needs to be a little bit longer for doors. Mm -hmm. But hey, I use this for doors. Obviously, it's on the lower setting. And I think today we were. You just saw me kind of last year. I think it was like on this setting or whatever. And uh, it's stout. It's it's definitely one of those has now. As far as the edge pliers for this, if you only had to buy one, definitely buy the prop and lock. You will. It will save you a lot of time. I agree. Um, you just be surprised when you, you're direct. We you have more direct pushes. Now this can save you uh, a ton of time. So it stays in my go back. So I love this billet aluminum around everywhere I go, and hope and pray that the door latches on it, <laughs> or most of the time the hoods and stuff latch onto it. But I use this kind of with the doors. So that, I am rolling over here, y'all. Like I'm killing it. If you got more, let me know because I can just keep rolling now. Cause this, this is some tool that I'm like, if if my truck disappears, like these are your <laughs> like, that's like I'm buying. Like I'm literally buying all of these tools like the same hour. Like I don't even care what the insurance is. But anyway, <laughs> so this is just a standard uh, sliding hammer. I do recommend getting it from uh, either uh, I don't know if Blim sells it, but I do. This is like the Dentcraft one. The two pound ones I prefer. I don't like the three pound ones. I love the two pound ones. So it's it's stopped. Never fail me. Knock on wood. I've never had an issue with the nut or anything. It's just it just works. But I really wanted to show you. This is you know is the Glexo glue. Um, I've used this today. I use it to test out any you know tension areas. I use it to move metal quick and fast. I mean, you saw me moving it like every now and then. I'll go to the Glexo, move those little low uh, those low areas yeah. just to see if it if it actually has any movement, like where it's bound up at. This will tell you. I mean, you can use this. It's just the Glexo glue. It's like cold glue. Um, so I, I recommend then getting a kit. It's like $240 or $230. I think you can get it. What's that care point? Who sells care point? What's that shop out in Denver? Uh, Dental Mark, Warehouse. Dental Warehouse. I'm pretty sure they have this in stock. Or you just go Glexo, which is uh, G-L-E-X-O. You have to get this. Obviously, Ryan put me on from uh, RPS, put me on. 
on cold glue itself, I have not experienced like sticky tape or any of that stuff. It's only been Glexo and I've been very pleased with it. As soon as I used it the first day, I ordered two more or three more kits for all my guys. So that that is a very good uh, accessory to have. It will save you a ton of time. Um, yeah, I gotta, I gotta show you. I think, I think Brian from Den Zone is on here, and so I prefer. I love this hammer. This is, this is my jeweler's hammer. It's actually called a riveting hammer. Uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, we're, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have some for you guys. But this is my favorite blending hammer. I can't talk about it because you can't get it. So <laughs> who knows where Brian was making it for me. But, I have uh, this hammer. I love you this guys hammer. Can't get it. Um, <laughs> so you have a hammer that you can't get. Oh, man. <laughs> no, no. This one you can get. Um, it's a, a, just a, it's a jackhammer from Shade Jacks. Okay. It's the XL, though. This is the XL. The, the, okay. Um, I When these first started coming out, you know, they were pretty pricey just for kind of what they were. Um, but over the years now, I have, I think, two or three of the XLs, two or three of the shorties as well. They're kind of just like almost go-tos. They all have just random different tips on them. Uh, this is what I was running today, just another blue deck craft tip. And then um, the Dead on Dent Tools match grade tip. Yeah, um, I like that. I really enjoy I mean, it. I cool. really enjoy it. It doesn't mar the paint. Um, yeah. yeah, it just it knocks down like a, you know, like a plastic tip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is kind of like if you guys need a blending hammer or don't know which one to get, yeah. this was my first one. Uh, it was kind of one of the first ones that really became prevalent when blending and the whole technique kind of started coming mm -hmm. out, or at least um, a hammer to do so. It works. It's light. Uh, both sizes, I think, are beneficial. They both have yeah. their benefits. Yeah. I would pick up the set. I know I think there's mm -hmm. a, a – you can get both sets for I don't even know how much. But yeah. this is kind of the first – blending hammers that I bought and I still use it to this day. Um, you really can't go wrong with them. Um, there's a couple others from Dead Technology that you actually can't buy anymore. I still use them, but uh, I have three or four of these kind of scattered around my tool cart with different tips on them. And the great it's a great hammer. A lot of guys have either put tape or paracord yeah, around the yeah. base here for a little more grip at, just in the shaft here at the bottom or at the handle. But other than that, I mean, it's a great hammer. It works. Yeah. I can blend with it. I can actually knock down crowns with it. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, Shane Jacks, I believe, or at least this hammer, you know, was kind of first to bring, you know, the uh, blending hammers to yeah. the market. Yeah. I, I don't know if he was the first to actually do blending. I'm pretty sure. I mean, talk the, the technique Brian, itself, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, around, I don't know, but, he, but at least bringing a, a tool to, yeah. to light, I mean, and yeah. shedding light, at least on the technique itself, and then having a a tool to do so with the technique, it works. Almost looks a little. Yeah. I think it's very technical. Yeah, <laughs> it works. You know what I mean? Like I'm. I, I don't know if you guys have caught this already, but yeah, I'm very aggressive with my tools. But if they work, you know, it's not the it's not the artist that makes the. Yeah, it's, the <laughs> it's not the no, artist no, that no, makes no, the no, art. No, you know no, what I mean? The paintbrush yeah. and all that stuff. And is it balanced though? Let's see where it balanced. It's a paintbrush. That's how I use. Call me Michelangelo. Yeah. It works. Pretty balanced. I mean, for the most part. Look at balance to me on your finger right now. Yeah, <laughs> it works. These, I mean, yeah. like I said, this is when I was just not getting into the industry, but kind of was looking for a blending hammer. Yeah, I have um, one. I have the short one. So I do recommend the longer one. Yeah. But some guys that are new to blending, probably the shorter one would be a little better. Yeah, it's just kind of start off, and then you really start to learn your techniques yeah. with the actual hammer itself. Yeah. Um, Blending is its own technique. It's yeah. its own uh, thing that you have to learn and mm -hmm. really become proficient with. So, uh, how long did it actually take you to learn how to really be proficient at? at I blending? started blending, quote unquote. Where I, I, Mike Toledo had talked about this a couple of years ago, and it was when he was blending. He was still leaving those little actual horizontal troughs. Because mm -hmm. I was blending with a hammer and knockdown. Okay. Mm -hmm. Blending. Right. Kind of just making it low on one side and low on the other, yeah, and it kind of hides yeah. the. You know the dent in the rail um after seeing a couple of videos really understanding the the process of vibrating that metal or yeah. really moving mm -hmm. that metal with a bounce of a hammer and the tip um that's when these started becoming really really important mm -hmm. so this was the first set that i picked up later on i think more and more hammers started coming out 
um, even like the rat, the hatchet ratchet or ratchet hatchet from Hayes Freeman right oh, now. Oh yeah, the new one with yeah, the pivots and stuff. Yeah, it's got the pivot, yeah. you know, and that's going to have its own technique, I think, as mm -hmm. well. And um, but yeah, so I for, like that hammer. Like, so if any of you guys have that ratchet hammer from Shane, I'm not saying Hayes, uh, Hayes, Hayes, Hayes Freeman. Hayes Freeman. Um, yeah, let us know in the comments. Uh, that's that seemed like nice. And what he's talking about is the ends pivot. And so if you're on an angle, you can pivot it, pivot, and it's you Still just adjust. That on so you just grab it by a two hand or one hand, and you just move it down, and it you know locks in. Yeah, it's a really really good design. Um, someone asked, "How many years have you guys been doing this?" I'm coming up on fourteen. Dave, I'm coming up on time. I'm rounding up. There you go. Rounding up. So anyway, uh, let's keep moving. So I believe still the um, Black Plague. Yeah, Black Plague green tabs are very good. I also like the Anson tabs, this root beer tabs. Now, they do have a new one, I think. Like, there's another, or well, maybe Black Plague has. People have been talking about it. Like, the tequila tabs, maybe. Anson. Anson. Anyway. So I use the yeah, tequila, yeah. if the green one doesn't get it out, then I switch off to the red the the um, root beer from Anson, which I actually, you know, if you order from Anson, you get actually I think a bag of like random tabs and you can try them out. That's how I actually ordered them, um, and they were doing so well that I actually had to order a complete set. But the new tabs that I've been running is the Dead Center from Kiko. They pretty much stole my heart, so. Uh, they say that the, the heads, the stem doesn't last long, but I've been pulling like crazy on these things. And so far, no breakage. Uh, it looks like one stretcher. <laughs> no, but So <laughs> as far as my tabs, you know, the crease tabs are still back on black plagues, you know, the green and the uh, gray. Uh, and then, like, again, the root beer. And then the um, dead center from Kiko. Uh, I do prefer the square tabs that I got turned <laughs> yes. out pretty much this Those last are pretty year. Good. Yeah. Uh, I used them actually for body lines. Um, I had a Ford Mustang, uh, newer body style, lower body line in the quarter panel that I couldn't get actual access to. And the only tab that would pull was the square yeah. uh, tabs. And mm -hmm. so I've really kind of not been accustomed to using them, but they're great for edges, great for body lines. Yep. I know the show can like keep going on. I mean, yeah, you, guys, well, you brought your whole bag. I brought a handful here. I could have brought my card up, but yeah. Because <laughs> I'm telling, like, you know, we're about to do a video where I'm, you know, I wanted to get a price of like what exactly I'm going to be riding around with. And me, I'm, I'm thinking I ride around with like twenty five thousand dollars worth of tools, you know, close to it, maybe twenty thousand. But these little accessories, you know, eighty bucks here, a hundred dollars here. I mean, they just start to add up. But I don't want to uh, go without, you know, this edgy, you know, tools. You know, it's kind of a tool that people have been using for the last three or four years. And you just, now it's like a standard, you know, from the rings to the edges. It's night and day. You can actually hook another one to get a different leverage point or just a lower leverage area. And to me, this changed the game. I used to run to Home Depot and get the chain and hooks and S -hooks, yeah. lose them all the time. But for some reason, I love the neon green. I can always point them, find them in a the car if I leave them. Or underneath the hood, I think they always just you know stand out. Uh, so you know, kudos the edgy tools. He has a lot of uh, tools out there for the tech, and it's just creative. His uh, you know his his ingenuity. His his I don't know if he invents this or stuff or it's just an I, idea. It's a, it's a, it's, like, it's, I, I mean, know. it was so like before everyone was using S hooks. Yeah, and there wasn't it's, a problem at first until you like, oh wow. <laughs> and all, like with the S hooks, it was a couple of them together, and sometimes the hook wouldn't fit in the hole itself, and um, you, or you'd be messing with different hooks and chains on it. I mean, this is just an all-in-one. You stick it right in there. You put your tool in. It's very simple. It's kind of has this little uh, bed for your tool to kind of rest on here. Yeah. Um, and they make a, a XL. Simple, I mean, he, he got like funny names for it, but he's he make they make a larger version. You get like hail rods. And yeah. Like some whale tails in it. Stuff like that. So, gotta get this if you don't have it. Um, and it also the chain actually can do a little damage to the hole. Correct. This does far less. It's still if you're really leveraging off, it still can kind of this point can still kind of dig down into certain uh, metals. Uh, yeah, I mean you have uh, to be careful. So I, you just you really have to be careful with it. 
Yeah, yeah. I've uh, I've torn hoods open with. Yeah, with this. With, yeah. yeah, I mean, and that's not. Yeah, I guess it's due to our fault, but it was a F one fifty hood, uh, aluminum. You know, it's it's supposed to be yeah. stout. Everything else, I threw this in there, and I was cranking on a body line, and the hole itself, yeah, just split right open. Wow. And I'm like, this is how these cars are made. But yeah. yeah, this was in there. So these, you know, yeah, they do sometimes damage. Yeah, they do damage. Yeah, um, watch out so you kind of have to be careful with what cars you're working on, or work, you know, what holes you're working with, mm -hmm. or sticking something like this, and and then leveraging off of this. So yeah. And then I, I don't want to bore you with all these accessories, guys, but I got to give kudos to Stucky on this. Um, I call it the talent yeah. wedge, I think is what it is. And, uh, you know, it just has this other, this notch halfway through or, you know, one, two thirds in. And it just can, just keeps your uh, wedge inside the door as you're, uh, you know, leveraging or you're working, in, you know, on the door dent. Uh, so if you don't have these, you have to get them. Um, I actually, yesterday, I only have one that I roll with and I have a standard one. So I had this one in the door and I had the standard one. I go down and I'm, I'm looking at the den like this and I'm working. Guess what? The standard one comes out, smacks me in the face. And I'm just like, you know, it didn't really hurt, but because it surprised me, I'm just like, God dang it. You know, like now I got to pick it back up, put it back in the door. So, you know, this eliminates that problem. Obviously, you can just grab it and, and go. Yeah. And also, if it ever... I haven't had this because it's so wide at the top, but if it ever goes down in the door, you do have something that you can grab onto and bring it right back up. That is nice. Yeah. So, it, and then it, again, going with that same theme, you can see it when it, you shove it in your bag or just put it in the wrong place, it stands out because of the yellow. So, yeah, Benny from Elite PDR <laughs> uh, sent me mine. I, nice. thank him, I thank him for that yeah, all the time nice. because I do use this wedge uh, tremendously. So we want to take this time to just go over some of the comments, guys. If you have any questions that is further up, please uh, just you know ask again. Do you guys tackle? How do you guys tackle sharp? Um, I guess the high. Wait, hold on, I'm sorry. Tackle yes, deep, how do you, high, I, sharp. Yeah. And I said VIP knocked out a light. Really close. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, man. My eyes are like <laughs> staring so at the light all day. When you, have a, you just ask when you have a very high spot. Yeah. Uh, a debt from the inside out. Uh, I said a VIP knockdown and your light very, very close so you can really yeah. see where the tip or that point is. Put your knockdown right yeah. on there, tap it down. Yeah, and, and if you cause that high spot, obviously, you know, you're not trying to do more work. So, you know, try to prevent that as much as you possibly can. Um, sometimes you just you just can't. But uh, the high spots that I make, I normally just use this blending hammer. So that's, that's kind of what I use. I don't use... Uh, or use my knockdown. I don't know if I have it in my pocket. Nope, don't have it in my pocket. Any other questions that we need to go over before we wrap it up? No, sir. That's it, guys. We try to go <laughs> over as many tools as we can actually bring in. I know Matt is on. He's just reminding me on 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 his little uh, Medusa or what is it? Get a grip kind of strong arm. Uh, that's one of the tools that comes to mind. I actually left it at the uh, shop, so I can't show you that. But, guys, I appreciate all the feedback, all the uh, support. Um, I'm going through the chat. I'm not trying to read it at the same time. So, Dave, is there anything I need to say? <laughs> all right. All right. So we're going to wrap it up, guys. Hey, thanks for joining us on the show. Please head over to our sponsors' uh, websites. Let them earn your business. Uh, please, if there's anything that we've mentioned here that they sell on the website, uh, you know, check there first if you can. Um, so, guys, thank you for the show. Thanks for the 25,000 subs. Please go ahead and share and, and, and like this video if you haven't already. Uh, I know it's pretty long and we're, like, rambling on, <laughs> but rambling, rambling off. But we want to bring as much tools as we possibly can can lug up into, uh, up into my house and my office. So thanks again, guys, for the support. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you guys so much. Peace. See ya.